I'm not a sexist. I just really don't want it to be a woman. I just feel that women are generally less competent than men and less rational. Greetings, fellow mortals. Just a reminder, saying it's just my opinion is for cowards. Normally, I try not to talk about the things that I hate. It only brings more attention to those things. But I find myself making exceptions in this case. Let's face it, we are all going to watch the Netflix live-action Avatar The Last Airbender. Most of us might even straight up hate watch it for pulling out all of the beautiful characterization that we love from the original series. Me talking about it won't bring one more eyeball to this show, so I might as well talk about what I want to talk about, because I love Avatar The Last Airbender. It's one of the best television shows ever made. And one of the most important aspects of the story is the main characters. The lore and the plot are one thing, but none of that matters if we take out the great characters, especially Katara. I'm not going to lie here. If anyone has a problem with Katara, I view that as a major red flag, even more so than other characters. Now, my favorite is Toph. She is literally the best perfectly written as both a character and as a warrior. But Katara is special. She's the heart of the show. If someone looks at her characterization and writing and thinks that it's bad, then I know the person involved has a lot of issues that are not even worth touching right now. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> In almost every single way possible, Katara is the most important character in Avatar The Last Airbender. No, not the actual Avatar. Aang wouldn't have gotten even past the first few episodes without Katara. And not just because Katara got him out of the iceberg. I mean just pulling Aang and Sokka in the right direction. You know those idiots wouldn't have gotten to the North Pole without her. They might have gotten there without Sokka, God love him, I swear he's great, but not Katara. She keeps people in line, willingly, eagerly, and that's an important part of her character. Why? Because she's a girl? No, you ignorant straw man. Well, kind of. I already talked about this with my Sokka video, which you should watch by the way, but Avatar is very anti-sexist, and part of that is showing how absolutely stupid sexism is. The fact that Katara acts like a caretaker from a young age is a multifaceted issue. One, based on her overall personality, she is probably more prone to being the peacekeeper. The calm one in every situation, the nurturing one. There are plenty of men and women just like this, and taking out that part of Katara's personality is stupid because it was probably in there to begin with. <laughs> You're breathtaking! But two, I won't argue that her nature was pushed into overdrive because of the situation around Katara. The water tribes have been shown to have issues with discriminating against women. 100% in the North Pole and a little bit in the South Pole, but that could just be Sokka. We don't know how the other men treated the women of the Southern tribe because they went off to war, but Hakoda never gave off the impression of being sexist. At the same time, there are no non-bender female warriors. Is that sexism or is it just how war tends to be when people don't have magical powers. That's a matter of interpretation in this case. So I would never argue that Katara's culture didn't push her to emphasize her caretaker instincts, but here's the thing. We don't know how much of it was the society of the Southern tribe naturally at peacetime or because of the war itself. Katara basically watched her mother die in front of her eyes, you know, as much as possible with a kid-friendly show. Kaya sacrificed herself specifically for Katara, and then her father went off to war, leaving Katara full of shame, guilt, and grief with no way to fill the hole in her heart but by taking over the main caretaker role in her family and in the tribe itself. So taking away that part of Katara's personality without providing anything else in return demeans the trauma of the situation that Katara experienced. Hmm. Really makes you think. 
Plus, Katara is not defined by her stereotypical mother role. She's a master warrior. She's the team healer. She's the least forgiving out of anyone in her group. She's biting towards those who irritate her and happy with the people in her life. And also, and I don't want people to forget this, she is a child. She's 14, maybe 15 by the end of the show. Imagine yourself at 14, having only ever known war, traveling the world to stop an evil tyrant, having no combat experience at all at the start. Of course, she's going to drift back into the stereotype typical roles, sewing, washing, cooking, but guess what? That fades away as the show goes on. By the time Toph joins the group, they're a well-oiled machine, dividing the chores evenly among each other. In fact, Katara has the most friction with Toph out of everyone for the rest of the series, not counting Zuko, because Toph's strong, independent rebellion often clashes with Katara's focus on the group over the individual. And both perspectives make perfect sense based on their backstories. Of course, Katara was going to throw herself into the mother role after watching her own mom die at the hands of a firebender. The guilt and the grief is strong there, plus the need for her to step up into that role. But at the same time, Toph has been suppressed by her parents, and of course, she wouldn't want another mother figure in her life. And now... When I try to remember my mom, Katara's is the only face I can picture. Katara's journey from a wannabe waterbender and surrogate mom to the greatest waterbender in the world, perhaps the greatest healer in the world, and the undisputed core of the group is what makes her journey amazing. Don't forget, she's the one who beat Azula in the end using just raw technique and cunning while Azula had a comet to make her 100 times stronger. Zuko was going to do it, but his journey was not that of raw strength. It was about realizing what was important in his life and that he defines his own honor, which he did with Katara. Katara's journey was to break out of the mold and reach greatness in her own way, along with coming to terms with her mother's demise, which she did with Zuko. And all of this originates from the fact that Katara was regulated to the stereotypical mother role at the start. It's called a journey and character development geniuses. Taking that away is limiting what female characters are allowed to have in stories. Main characters are not supposed to have the personalities of white bread. Katara oozes personality out of every pore and I appreciate everything about her. You can't just drag out her caring attitude and her coping mechanism and replace it with nothing. She's going to be so boring. Someone who's motherly can also be kick-ass. And to me, removing that part of her is 100 times more sexist than having Katara be the group mom. You're welcome to disagree with all this. That's fine. After all, everyone is entitled to their objectively wrong opinion. I'm not sexist. Being sexist is wrong. Yeah. And being wrong is for women. Hey, do you like stories about an interconnected world? Then consider giving my LP Shield books a try. They are all connected in some way, but you can jump in at any point, unless it's a series. Then you have to start at the beginning. But I got three books out right now, and three coming next year. You will not have to wait long for content. Either way, thank you. I appreciate you. Do not despair.